Hiker Jay here. This week I'm out on the property and one of our access roads is already iced over. And what that means is I'm gonna have to go to a warmer sleeping pad. So this week I'm gonna tell you about the Thermarest Prolite Apex. Uh, this is a great bag for three season. We're talking spring, winter, fall type weather. So it does have a little bit more weight in it, having foam in it, but it's so much more worth it when it's cold out like this and you need to insulate yourself from the ground. So let's go unroll this thing and I'll tell you about all the awesome features of why this is my go-to in cold weather. Before we get into the review, if this is the first on my channel, thanks for stopping by. Would love to have you subscribe and check out my videos. I put out new videos on outdoor gear every week. Additionally, the products, as always, are in the description down below. You can find the link down there to my Amazon affiliate. And finally, in full disclosure, I do want to share with you that Thermarest did send me this sleeping pad, the Thermarest Apex Pro Lite, to use and to test, and I absolutely love it. I appreciate it from them. They're not paying me to do this review, but I did get it for free, so I wanted to share that with you. Let's break down some specs on this before we roll it out. Now it is a two inch foam style with air. You have to blow into it as well to get it fully, but it will inflate itself using the foam. For being a foam sleeping pad, it packs down pretty small. This is the size of just a little bit smaller than maybe a paper towel roll, which is pretty awesome. It is rated to uh, 4R value, which is the insulation value, which is absolutely awesome. If you're gonna get something to sleep out in the middle of winter, you want a 4R value for sure, at least a four. Um, now the weight, where does it come in at? It is one pound 14 ounces. Um, that might seem like a, a little heavy, but when it comes to winter camping, one pound 14 ounces for what you get out of this, the insulation from the ground, a really good night's sleep. And also I'm a side sleeper. And so I have like a lot of hip penetration through the actual pad to the ground. And I don't get that with this one, which is absolutely awesome. The last thing is this cool little cinch bag. So you put it in here and you cinch it down, which is great. They all have stuff sacks, but it also has this little pocket here. I think it's actually designed like once you take the bag down, you turn it inside out and put everything in it. But what I do is I put my inflatable pillow right in there and then I've always got it. So that way I've got my complete sleep system right here. All I have to do is add my sleeping bag and I'm good to go. Now let's pull this out of this package, inflate it and talk about it. When you're rolling up the pad, you have to fold it long ways, half way, and then uh, it deflates pretty well, but we're just gonna roll it right out. has a valve on this side so we just open it up and let it kind of in fill itself up as you can see it's already sort of filling itself up but I kind of want to show you how this works so this is foam on the inside you can see sort of how thick this is and what it does is it goes up and down up and down up and down and then it has alternating air pockets as it goes across here once you fill up the actual foam so you've got air on the bottom air on the top and foam in the middle. Now once it's kind of inflated through the foam, you're still gonna have to give it a couple puffs just to fill it up all the way. And what I do is I fill it all the way up, nice and tight. And then I, once I lay on it, I reach over with my shoulder and I adjust it for the actual like softness that I want. So now that I've got this blown up, you can see that it's got that two inches thickness that I really love in a sleeping pad. Two inches is awesome. I'm an older dude, I'm kind of a big guy, so I need that extra padding and it just makes for a better trip experience if I'm really, really comfortable. Now the Prolite Apex comes in three different sizes. This is the long, the extra long one, um, because I'm a tall guy, but they have a regular and then a smaller one as well. Um, so you'd want to find one that fits your size, but this is the biggest one they have. So the max weight you would have would be one pound 14 ounces. Now, what I've learned too, is that if you've ever slept on a hard surface like this, that's putting a mat to its full test. So if you use shelters in some type of like, you know, the uh, Appalachian Trail or Isle Royal, where we do a lot of hiking, um, then the, you want something that's gonna give you a lot of padding against wood like this. That's why we have this deck out here on our property, um, just so we can get off the ground. It's wet back here a lot, so we can sleep on something, but it's hard. So um, that's important for you to know. So now once you're laying on the pad, you're gonna to wanna to let a little bit of air out and it's so easy just to reach up here, let the air out to the point where you're not laying completely flat like a board. It lets your spine kind of curve the way it should and your rear end to go and then you're nice and comfortable. So many people over inflate their pads and then it ends up being really rigid and flat. You might as well be sleeping on the ground. So that's a nice little trick. Make sure you let out air to your desired comfort. It's kind of like a sleep number bed. It's pretty awesome. But the big thing for me is the side sleeping. So I can sleep on my side completely like this, and right now my hip is not even touching this, which I love. This is like being on a bed. And additionally, because it's so cold and I have the R value, I'm not gonna have all that cold seeping up into my body because you know how it is, you go into a sleeping bag, but you generally crush that part of the sleeping bag so the insulation is not really working for you. So you want a pad 
like this that's going to give you that insulation between the ground and yourself. You know, another way I make sure that a pad like this with foam in it and air uh, is filled properly is that I kneel on it. I just get on my knees and I sit kneeling on the actual pad. Right now I am not touching the ground at all. I can't feel any of the hardness of the deck and that tells me that I've got this at a good level. The tough thing about that with a sleeping pad that's just air, I will go right down. But having the foam gives it that extra rigidity, keeps me off of it. So you can see that this has a lot of benefit of having foam into it. I've used this actually in the summer. Um, I know it's a little bit heavier for backpacking or whatever, but definitely camping in my Jeep where it's hard in the back, you know, this is a go-to for real big comfort. When you're talking two inches, lots of length, lots of width, it's just really comfortable when it comes to being out in the elements in a really cold weather or on something that's really hard surface. Now to deflate this, it does take longer than just an air filled one. You release the valve, turn it around, and then this is the tricky part. You have to actually fold it in half. So go ahead and get some air out of it. Fold it in half. Because it has foam in it, it's gonna fight you a little bit. Um, so it's gonna be a lot different, but my trick is just using my knee. So I begin the roll and I put one knee on it. And I just keep putting my knee on it. Putting my knee on it, kind of pressing out all the air. This may seem like a simple thing, but it is really important that you learn to roll this up properly because it's hard to get into this small little bag. And you do want it nice and small so that it can fit in a backpack or in not take up all the room in the back of a car. Now you just slide it in. You've got the cinch strap on the top. I want to cinch that down for sure. Now you've got your cinch panel, put them around and cinch it down just a little bit more to bring it down to its smallest size for packing. So as you can see, it takes a little bit longer to break it down and put it in than some sleeping pads, but it's well worth the little bit of effort. The last thing to tell you, and this is really important when you have a foam pad like this, is to not leave it packed like this at home. You're gonna to wanna to take it out of its uh, sleep sack you can actually seal it up so it doesn't get all the way filled. But what I do is I just roll it open all the way. Like this, I might let a little bit more air in to let it spread out a little bit. And then you're gonna store it sort of like this at home so that it's nice and open, it's loose, the foam can kind of breathe and get a little bigger. You don't wanna be crushing that foam. Over time, that would break it down and it wouldn't self inflate as well, but it also wouldn't give you as much warmth. So, you definitely want to store it in a state like this, somewhere in a shelf or a cabinet or something like that. The Thermarest Pro Light Apex is just a really great sleeping pad if you're looking for one for all around. But if you're looking for winter, this type of weather, you definitely want something with foam in it, and this is by far one of the best. I highly recommend it. Hopefully you found something in this video helpful in making your decision on your sleeping pad. Till next time, just remember, life's a hike, so hike happy in a nice little thermo